The much-loved 10 Warthog has finally gotten a big update, and it will stay in use for another 10 years. What has been updated, and what will this famous plane do now? Continue to see to learn. The USAF looked at current close air support, or CAS, capabilities in 1966 and found that the Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne helicopter was the best one. Selected in the Army's Advanced Aerial Fire Support System competition would not be able to do all the jobs that the Department of Defense needed, such as protecting troops and putting out fires. The Air Force decided to buy a CAS plane that is simple, efficient, cheap, dedicated, and able to survive. And that is at least as good as the AL-1. A 10 Thunderbolt II was the end result. The Fairchild Republic A-10, which was also known as the Warthog, had big, straight wings that made it easy to turn at low air speeds and very low altitudes. This also made the Warthog a stable and very accurate base for dropping weapons. It was designed so that the plane could operate from short, simple runways. It had a strong landing gear with low pressure tires so it could use forward airstrips close to the front lines. Like the Warthog, the Cold War tank killer was built around the amazing 30mm GAU-8 a Gatling gun and could be serviced and maintained from bases close to the fight area that didn't have a lot of facilities. Widely said to be the size of a milk bottle and fire 3,900 rounds per minute, the gun itself was said to be the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Ultra-heavy, ultra-dense, depleted uranium was used to make them so that they could destroy a wide range of ground targets, including tanks. The uh, 10A could carry 1,100 and 744 rounds of this kind of ammo. Along with the a 10 speed, agility, and precision, this huge cannon had an unmatched ability to survive. The engine's main landing gear and vertical stabilizers are just a few of the parts that can be switched between the left and right sides of the plane. This makes it easier to fix damage caused by battle. The plane's self-sealing fuel tanks and other devices were protected or redundant, are covered by foam on the inside and outside. Titanium armor surrounds the cockpit and protects some parts of the flight control system. This makes it possible for the plane to survive direct hits from armor piercing and high explosive weapons up to 23 millimeters in diameter, taking damage in battle and returning to base to be fixed. The extra hydraulic flight control systems are backed up by manual systems. This way, if hydraulic power goes out, the pilot can still fly the plane. The A-10 showed its worth in Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Its ability to fight tanks, long loiter, and wide combat radius were all very useful. It showed a task capability rate of 95.7%. They flew 8,100 missions and fired 90% of the AGM-65 Maverick missiles used in the Gulf War. Once the Cold War was over, the A-10's unique skills weren't needed as much because close air support was mostly about dropping precise weapons from medium heights, which wasn't much the Warthog could do, even though it had a long range stayed in the air for a long time and could carry up to 16,000 pounds of ammo in addition to its 30 millimeter cannon, it wasn't used very often. The possibility of taking the A-10 out of service has been talked about for a long time. The Warthog close air support jet will stay in service until the 1930s though, because the US Air Force has chosen to improve it. The jet, which was made to rule the battles of the Cold War, will still be in use 40 years after the Soviet Union broke up. The good news is that, why is this bad news? The uh, 10's improvements are based on its need to be able to survive in a hostile setting. In this case, Warthog pilots avoid threats by using standoff weapons from farther away and adapting their techniques. In the future, Warthog missions will include being able to use precision weapons at longer ranges to fight some threats. The A-10s should be able to go on more normal tasks after these threats have been taken out. In short, the A-10 is being kept under one condition. It is no longer supposed to fly over battlefields that are highly guarded. The Air Force is sure that the plane, the GAU-8 Avenger, a 30mm Gatling gun designed to fire missiles, rockets, and bombs, can no longer fly over double-digit air defenses like the Russian Tor and Panzer S-1 short-range air defense weapons. So now, the Warthog can only help U.S. troops fly over airspace that is lightly contested or protected. Think of Somalia or Afghanistan. China or Russia? No way. 
Adding the GBU-39 small diameter bomb is one of the most important improvements. With its wings and tracking system, the GBU-39 is a 250-pound high-explosive bomb that can hit specific ground targets from up to 40 miles away. It is possible for the Warthog to carry up to 18 GBU-39s, which means it could attack up to 18 different targets. Upgraded A-10s and unmanned aerial vehicles could work together to stop enemy bomb tank formations and air defenses. UAVs could find enemy air defenses before they were shot down. By telling the A-10 crews where the weapons were located, the Warthogs could then use the GBU-29s to destroy them. They could then close in on enemy tanks and armored vehicles with GM-65 Maverick missiles, high-explosive bombs, and of course the GIU-8 Avenger 30mm 7-barreled Gatling gun. Also, a program to rebuild the wings of the 218A-10C is already in progress so that it can keep flying until the 2030s. Boeing's HOGA program, which started in 1999 and meant to make planes last up to 16,000 flying hours longer, is built on by this program. The initial agreement was for 117 wings, and an extra 125 wings could be added if needed. Out of these, 173 wings have already been ordered, and 69 more can still be ordered. Also, the Air Force is working on the HRDS and 11.6-inch, 1920x1080 multifunction color display that will replace the six analog instruments in the middle of the cockpit with a digital main flight display. It will show high-definition video from the targeting pod and a new map engine. It is the biggest update to the cabin since the change from the A-10A to the A-10C. Along with other changes to the A-10, the Scorpion helmet mounted display will also get better. This is an augmented reality system that puts targets on the ground above the pilot's field of view. So pilots can find enemy troops on the ground and attack them as fast as possible so that they are less likely to be hit by enemy fire. These updates are important because they add up-to-date navigational aids that make it easier to see what's going on around you when you're flying in instrument meteorological conditions. Targets will be much easier to see because the targeting pod footage will be shown in higher quality and better map imagery will make it easier to connect targets. Along with the Link 16 network for sharing information with friendly troops, the plan could also include a synthetic aperture radar pod that can scan the ground and find tanks and armored vehicles at night and in bad weather like fog or clouds. The long-held goal of re-engineering the A-10s is not currently part of the plans. With the help of new part suppliers who use modern methods, the General Electric TF-34 engines may be able to get back to their original thrust, instead of the slight detune that the plane is presently flying with. What plane will fly over America's rivals instead of the A-10? Naturally, the F-35. In some ways, that was the right choice, even though Americans really like the A-10. If the enemy had current air defense guns and missiles, they would probably shoot it down in large numbers. The F-35 can move faster and respond better to the fast-paced ground fight, its stealth makes it less of a target as well. Its sensors and communications let it gather information about threats on the ground so the pilot can fight them successfully. The F-35's lack of weapons makes it a bad choice for close air support. There are many weapons on the A-10 Thunderbolt, such as the 30mm GAU-8 Avenger Gatling gun, Maverick missiles, 70mm rockets, guided and unguided bombs, and the GAU-8 Avenger 30mm Gatling gun. Instead, the F-35 has a 25mm gun called the GAU-22 Equalizer that only has 181 rounds. It can also only hold two laser or satellite-guided bombs in its internal compartments. On wing-mounted pylons, the F-35 can carry more bombs, but this makes the jet easier for enemy radars to spot. But the F-35 might not be able to keep its close air support job for long. Right now, it costs $45,000 an hour to fly an F-35A, the Air Force may decide that the task should shift to a cheaper unmanned aircraft that can still carry out missions. A better future answer for contested airspace might be a lot of cheap but heavily armed drones with a human pilot planning drone attacks from a safe distance. Which plane would be best for this mission? This is the A-10. The Air Force's choice is a mixed win for people who like the A-10, which is kind of like the mythical ideal of the A-10. As a titanium armored Valkyrie flying over hordes of enemy tanks and smashing them into pancakes while dodging enemy rocket fire is now permanently over. 
Still, the Warthog from the 1970s is flying much longer than anyone thought it would, and it may even beat the F-35 in the end. So what do you think of this brand new A-10 Warthog? Share your thoughts in the space below. You may also write about why you like or hate this plane. We looking forward to hearing it. Leave a like, follow, and turn on notifications if you like this video so you can always stay in touch. I appreciate you watching.